We know that the brain is a pretty big and amazing organ. Of course, here it's inflated much, much larger than normal size. But if a neurosurgeon with a bent towards the cardiovascular has a task to put a probe that's inserted in a blood vessel in your groin up to the brain, in the middle of the brain, he can go right into the middle of the brain and fish out a blood clot without bursting the bubble. It sounds truly amazing. Is that magic or is it just skill of the neurosurgeon? However, if you misuse your tools, this very delicate organ, the brain, can be toast, right? Now, the likely neural correlate of consciousness is, of course, neurons, and they're connected in huge networks, global networks throughout the brain. When the brain is challenged and is undergoing death, it starts at the level of the neurons. And it's called apoptosis, where these neurons die until finally they're gone. We can think of consciousness as involving the brain, the outer balloon, the mind, the middle balloon, and the spirit, the innermost core balloon. Now, if a person undergoes traumatic brain injury, of course, this outer brain might become severely damaged. And then we're left with the mind. So what can the mind do? Well, this is where we have cognition and some thoughts. And in the minimally conscious state, we have what's left is, without the brain is the mind. What happens if you then lose your mind? What would then be left? And then we have the innermost part of man, the spirit. What happens if the person, the final tethering of the spirit is unleashed at death that we talked about previously? And what happens to the spirit? Or that free spirit might just jet away.